It has taken me like a hundred years exactly to get all of this set up today. I don't know why, but like nothing was working. Nothing was, anyway. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing all of my favorite things that I've been loving throughout the month of February, but going into March. We're now about mid-March, which is crazy. Every month when it comes to do this video, I feel like I don't have much. And then as I start listing them, I'm like, oh yeah, I've been using this, I've been using that. So this is just a collection of things that I've been using throughout the month. Some things a little bit longer and I'm gonna be sharing them with you. So let's jump into it. First and foremost, I started kickboxing again and um, completely ripped apart my skin. So if you see that, that's what it is. I haven't gotten in any fights, just been hitting a punching bag, which has been great. I started using this two weeks ago and I've been loving it so far. So I have wanted to kind of step up my game with my skincare, do some more like anti-aging. I started using Differin. This is great for acne, but it's also really good for fine lines, wrinkles, and all of that kind of stuff. This is, a, I believe, a 30-day supply, and then to really see the results come through, you wanna use it for three months. So I will be continuing to repurchase this. So far, so good. I actually noticed a difference right away when I used it. Like when I woke up the next day, I felt like just the texture on my skin was a little bit smoother. That for me was the number one thing, even though I do wanna help with like aging and just the aging process. I do get some texture here on my skin and when I do break out, it's here on my neck. As you can see, I have some pimples. I use this from my face to my neck only at night. I've been using it two times a week and the next day you wanna make sure that you follow up with an SPF just because this is like majorly like shedding off your skin basically. From my understanding, this is one of the best, if not the best over the counter retinol. So, so far so good. It will irritate your skin. Like I am really dry and flaky in my nose today cause I used it last night. It just feels a little tight, but then as a couple days go on, it feels a little bit normal again. But then anytime I use it again, that will happen. Everyone's gonna react a little bit differently. You wanna make sure you do a patch test. If you have a skincare expert that you see, talk to them about it if you're interested, but so far, so good. I've been really liking it. And I will keep you posted on my different journey because it's only been two weeks, but so far I've been really liking my results, even though I don't really have major results yet. Um, that is one thing you can break out from it. So in here, it, I feel like it's like purging stuff that was under the skin. And when I do break out, this is where it is. I also randomly got a pimple right here last week. You know, I don't really break out there ever, so it was just random to have like a random pimple there, but um, expect to go through some not so fun stages from what I understand, but I'm excited. I'm excited to like help with the texture on my skin, and just aid in the aging process. Um, so far, no Botox, no filler in my face, and I'm trying to do that as long as possible, if ever. I just felt like I was ready for it. To be honest, I was very, just chill with my skincare the last few years. I used to be like really into it years and years ago, probably when I had like no business being into skincare like that. But I mean, I started my skincare routine when I was like 18, because as soon as I got into the beauty industry, I learned a lot from skincare experts and like skincare brand representatives and stuff. And so ever since then, I've been using things on my skin to help just just with my skin. Um, and then just the last couple of years, I've just been so over it that all I did was like cleanse, moisturize, and that's it. Like sometimes I wouldn't even do eye cream because I would just use my moisturizer as my eye cream. And then sometimes I would use like a hyaluronic acid serum, but not consistently. So, you know, I'm finally ready to like really care a little bit more about my skin. And I felt like right now would be the best time to do it because then I'll be done right as summer starting and then I can use it for like maintenance and stuff. So I don't really have a lot that I need to take care of. Like it's not like a lot, I have like a lot of acne or anything, but I do get texture in my skin. And so I'm just excited to go on this little journey. So been loving this. It was very inexpensive. Got it on Amazon. You can get it at your drugstore. Loving it. So next up, I wanted to share my shampoo that I've been using because I just finished it. I've had this for so long. I think I've had this for about a year, maybe a little bit less. I'm ready to switch it up. I think that I'm probably going to get 
either the Pureology Strength Cure shampoo again, because it's been a while since I've used that and I love that. I'm currently using the, condi using the conditioner. I love that. Um, or potentially, <laughs> potentially one from Pantene Pro-V. I know, um, I feel like we've been told that like Pantene Pro-V is like the worst for you, but I follow this girl on, or I don't follow her, but she like comes up in my TikTok feed sometimes and she talks all about like different drugstore hair products that are actually decent and just as good as salon quality. So I've been interested in trying this one from Pantene um, that she recommends. So we'll see. Either way, I'm probably still gonna get strength care, but all of that to say, my next favorite has been this shampoo that I have used for about the last year, I'm pretty sure. This is the Redken Volume Injection Shampoo, and I wanted to share this because it is completely empty. This is what I've been using. I'm, I, I can't remember when I bought this. I think it was right after I took out my extensions, which was February or early March of last year. So now I've been a year without hair extensions, which, big step for me and I feel like my hair has really come a long way and I only bleached it once since then and then in, um, the last time I got my hair done was October I am going in April and I'm probably you know I'm just so undecided on what exactly I want to do I'm thinking I'm gonna bring more of my natural through or maybe just have her tone this to I don't know, I really don't know. I do know that I like all the layers that she put in my hair and I like the length. So we'll see, to be continued, but I really loved this shampoo. I think I will buy this again. I think it really helps with volume, especially right after I got my extensions out. For like probably the first four months, I felt like my hair was just really flat, which makes sense because when you have, they were tape in extensions or any, any kind of weight on your hair, any type of extension like that, when it's just sitting on your hair, it's, it's pulling down, it's, it's sitting on the hair, it's weight on the hair. So for people that say that hair extensions aren't damaging at all, that's not true. You're gonna have some kind of damage no matter what. And even from a ponytail, putting your hair into a ponytail is gonna create damage on your hair. So from that, I just felt like my hair was like stick down to my head and I wanted to have more volume in my hair. So I bought this and the first time I used it, I definitely noticed a difference immediately. And then I just kept using it. Now, because it is a volumizing shampoo, I didn't put this on my ends, which I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that anyways anytime I shampoo my hair I always just keep it at the scalp and then as I rinse it out it kind of just like goes throughout um, I'm pretty sure that's the correct way to do it but anyway because I knew that this was volumizing that can be more drying on the hair so um, I was more careful not to bring that through the ends to dry them out and I feel like I've just I've just loved this so um, I do want to just switch it up just because I think it's good to switch up your hair products from time to time um, especially shampoo and conditioner so I will be getting the strength cure next or try that Pantene one, but I will come back to this at some point and I highly recommend. I mean, this is huge. <laughs> so love that. I'm going to keep that. There's a little bit at the um, bottom here. So I'm just going to keep this upside down in my shower so I can get the rest of it. So yeah, that's the plan. Next up, I have a nail polish that I think you're going to be a little surprised by because I've been a neutral bitch for forever. But before I was a neutral bitch, I was a hot pink bitch. And this was my favorite nail polish. And I don't have this on my nails, obviously. I actually haven't painted my nails in since the new year, I don't think. I think I did them in my like new year glow up video. And then I haven't done it since. And I'm just trying to get them to be like healthy again. Anyway, this is Pom Pompe, Pompe Purple from OPI. I love this. I have it on my toes and it's just, I feel like I'm gonna be wearing this all summer. This used to be my go-to back in like my early, I've got something in my eye, back in like my early 20s. I always had this on my toes. And then at some point I just switched and I only did black nail polish on my toes. Here we are, we've come full circle and we've got this bright ass pink on my toenails and I just feel so cheerful. It makes me so happy. So. That's what I have on my, on my toes right now. It's like a hot pink with like a few, don't, don't mind my sweaty armpits by the way. It was a hoot trying to get all of this together and I'm a sweaty bitch. But yeah, it's like a hot pink with like a purple iridescence to it and it's just so pretty. And it kind of gives me like a nostalgic feel because I used to wear it all the time. I can't believe I've waited this long before I started talking about this, but my next favorite has been my silver jewelry. I, I just love it. I feel like silver is just my color, especially with my natural hair color. I just think it really pops. It really makes it 
come to life. Um, I've talked about my color analysis a million times, but here, well, what's a million and one? I found Color Analysis Studio on YouTube. I've watched every single one of their videos and they've really simplified the whole color analysis thing. I feel like it's so popular on TikTok and Pete, there's so much misinformation, not misinformation, but just like wrong information going around about how to find what your colors are. Anytime I see someone do like one of those like filters where it shows like the color swatch and stuff, the comments are always like so all over the place. Everyone thinks someone's a different color and then they start talking about your hair, your eyes and all of that stuff. And what it comes down to is your skin undertone. And I learned so much from this YouTube channel. I'll link them down below. I've talked about them before. They're just the best. And I would love to have them do my color analysis, but just based on what I learned from the from their videos, I'm absolutely, I'm pretty sure, a cool summer, but could use some cool winter colors. Anyway, regardless, I am cool toned, which is why I decided to start wearing silver jewelry. Um, so like my shirt, this is technically, I think a cool winter color. Like it's definitely a little bit more contrasty, but I feel like it just makes, everything pop and everything go together. My makeup is very um, cool summer-esque because I have these pale cool pinks and I've just been loving like it's not like I think about that before every single thing I put on but it does help me put things together when I'm not really sure what to wear and I just think that knowing what your colors are can help you it just kind of helps to simplify things once you know and understand it so like with the silver jewelry it's surprising because like, I don't know, the same people that I see all the time, they're, they're used to seeing you, you know? And then when I started wearing the silver jewelry, multiple people have commented on it and they would say, oh, like, oh, that looks so good on you. And so anyway, it's just science, interesting. Um, so this is the combo that I always wear from Miranda Fry. I always would wear it in gold, but because of the whole color analysis thing, I started doing the silver. So we've got the Drew Huggies, which are these chunkier ones here. I do have a discount code with them. It's Brianna Fox for 10% off. I do make commission from that, just so you know, but I will link them down below. And then these are the Alyssa Huggies. I'm just obsessed with this combo and I can't wait to get more silver pieces. I started with just these two just to see if like this was really gonna be a thing for me. Turns out it is, turns out I'm obsessed and I just think that it flatters my features really well. Now, will I wear gold again? Absolutely, because gold is beautiful and I think you can wear whatever you want. So that's what I'll be doing, but it's just nice to know. And it's fun because like for years, I just didn't wear silver because I felt like gold got so popular. And so we were all wearing gold and there's nothing wrong with silver and I like it. So yeah, I'll link those down below. Next is this brow pencil. I feel like I talk about this all the time, but also it's one of those things that's just like very underrated or I just feel like brow pot products in general, unless it's something revolutionary, I feel like I just kind of skip over it. So I thought that I would share my favorite brow pencil at the moment. This is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. I have the shade Brunette. This is what's in my brows right now and I just love it. I feel like this is just as good as any high-end brow pencil. It's so beautiful. The color is perfect for my brows. I also love that I can fill them in very lightly with this, but then I can also go in with a heavier hand and build it up and make it a little bit darker. I just love it. And that's all there is to say about this brow pencil. Next up is this fragrance. I've talked about this specifically a million times, I feel, but now it's springtime. We are right at spring, thank God. Yesterday was daylight savings. I don't know about you guys, but just having it be brighter an hour later just feels so good in my soul. It just feels, <sighs> anyway. Because we're at the cusp of spring, it is time to bring out my springtime fragrances, which I've actually been wearing for the last two months anyways, because I've been ready. <laughs> um, these are both from Jo Malone. This is the Jasmine Sam Back and Marigold. Obsessed. I'm wearing this alone right now because I ran out of my other one, but I would usually mix this with Peony and Blush Suede, but I'm completely out of this. This one specifically There's a car turning right with his blinker on and the truck behind him 
was writing his ass so he didn't see his blinker. So he was upset. <laughs> so unnecessary. Anyway, this one is the one that I actually wore on my wedding day, but I feel like these two mixed together are just so glorious. They're beautiful on their own as well. Um, and that's how I've been wearing this one is just by itself, but together they just make the best little spring summer concoction. It's so just feminine and glorious. So I need to repurchase this because I miss it. Oh, oh it's so, I miss it. It's so good. So good. Um, and I do believe we have a Sephora sale coming up. If you want a recommendations video, let me know. I just feel like it's a little repetitive. You guys, I've you, you've been watching me use the same stuff for years and I feel like my recommendations are still the same for the most part. Um, but if you would like a Sephora recommendations video, let me know because I do know that they have their sale coming up. So all of that to say, I'm gonna have to get this in the sale and save some money. You guys know I've been obsessed with that Nike sweat set, that like brown sweatshirt with the sweatpants. So because I love that so much, and to be honest, I'm gonna be very straightforward with you. The body image has just not been good for like the last two and a half years, but especially lately, not good. So for that, I've been dressing in things that make me feel good. And that sweat set is just, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel comfortable. So I wanted to get some other colors. So I got a blue, a purple, and a gray. Now the blue and purple, I'm completely returning the purple. It looks crazy um, on my skin tone. The blue is cute, but the pants, that, that's where I'm getting at. The there's, there's an issue, there's a discrepancy with the pants. So I got a medium in both. So, like the, the brown one fits me like a glove. It's perfect. I got the short length, but they didn't have the short length in all of them. So I got all those other colors in the regular length. I think it just added so much more fabric in general that I'm just swimming in them. So I haven't bought like a size small sweatpants in like two years. I think I'm gonna have to exchange them. But I don't know, I've already worn, I've already worn the gray one, so I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to show you the gray because I like it. <laughs> it's just a simple sweatshirt, but I've been really liking these. They make me feel a little bit more put together, especially when I'm around the house, just working on my laptop, or if it's like a chill day or a cleaning day, just having a cute matching set makes you feel a little bit more put together. Put on a hoop, do no makeup, put your hair in like a sleek bun or wash it, whatever. It makes you feel a little bit more put together when you're just lounging around the house. Now, if you can go try on the pants if you're interested because I'm having a hard time with um, the sizing on those because now the regular mediums are just like so oversized that I don't know if it's cute. You know how there's like an oversized fit that's cute. It's like, ooh. Oversized. These look crazy on me. So we'll have to figure that out. I'll keep you posted. I have my socks sitting here. These are so random. These are clean, fresh out of the dryer, but they don't look clean just from wear and tear, you know. But these are my favorite socks from Aritzia. I will link them down below. And I know it's so random, but socks are important. When you get a pair of socks that doesn't feel good, it's noticeable. So I wanted to share the ones that I'm just obsessed with. These are, again, from Aritzia. And I get the little like, it's like a ankle length one. So it goes right up over your ankle. It's not too high up. Again, I'm really short. So any of the like higher tube socks that goes up, I just feel like it cuts my leg off and makes me look weird. These are nice because it gives me that same look, but it's shorter down. So it just doesn't take up so much of my leg. Anyway, I love these and wanted to share. And while we're on the topic of the foot area, I have a follow up on my last favorites video. I mentioned my New Balance 530s, I think they are. My little like, those dad shoes, grilling shoes, you know? Um, yeah, I'm pretty positive that those gave me plantar fasciitis. I've had heel pain in my left foot. And on that same side, I had knee pain as well when I was wearing those. Um, but it took a while for me to realize that it was probably the shoes. Um, and now I have to like recover from it. So um, I stopped wearing those shoes. Um, thankfully, like my hokas that I have, work really well for that. Um, and so they have like arch support, they're great. It feels like you're walking on a cloud. So I'm wearing those more often again, but I'm bummed because I loved those new balance shoes. And now like I'm so active. I like to work out. I like to walk. I like to 
do activities and I'm having to like really you know, sit back and let my foot recuperate because if I keep doing all of these activities, it just doesn't let it heal. So that's kind of sucked. Do notice that when I do let it rest, I feel better. Yeah, but yeah, that kind of sucks. And I think I mentioned them in last month's favorites video, so. So the books that I read this month, I read the first Akatar book, which is A Court of Thor Thorns and Roses. Um, I gave like a little mini review in my last video, but if you missed that, um, I wasn't a huge fan, but I'm going to keep reading because I've heard that it just gets better. So started the second book, but I haven't listened to it since I made that video. So we'll see. Hopefully I'll have another review for you by the end of the month. So next month's video, I can have more to say. Um, but I'm also listening to the book Worthy. I forgot the author. I forgot what her name is. I know her name is Jamie, but I can't remember the rest of her name. <laughs> Jamie Kern Lima. Um, she is the... CEO, I believe of it cosmetics. She was on the skinny confidential podcast and I've, I've kind of like known about her in just like the makeup industry for like 10 years. She was on the skinny confidential podcast, which I love that podcast. And she just had a lot of really good, like motivational things to say. And she came out with a book called worthy. And, um, it's all about just like learning your self worth and, um, kind of like boosting your self confidence, all of that kind of stuff. And it's so funny because in my last vlog, I mentioned like my favorite self development books and someone actually commented that book, which is so funny because I'm reading it. So, so far so good. I haven't finished that yet, um, but she's got a lot of great insight, which I really appreciate, so. And then last but not least, I, I hope I remember to do this going forward, but I thought that it would be fun to, at the end of every favorites video, share a couple of creators that I follow online um, because I just feel like it's so funny that the industry is so saturated. However, I feel like it's really hard to find people that really align with you because I feel like when I go on the internet, there's just an influx of people that just show up and then I end up only seeing like who's popular or one niche. I don't know. It's like, and, and I'm looking for someone that's so niche <laughs> or like, I don't know, maybe someone I follow, I follow for this reason, but then I follow this person for this reason. So I thought, you know what? Let me just share some people that I follow. Just spread a little love. So um, I actually asked you guys on Instagram who you follow because I wanted some recommendations. And so there's two people on here that I found through that and then two people that I've been following. So the two people that I've been following, I'll share them first. First one I have is Alana Davis and I really like her because she's in the beauty industry but she also has a lot of great health content fitness content and also um, fashion content. I love the way that she dresses and I aspire to dress like that myself. And I just like that she's just very chill. She's very funny, gorgeous, and I like her vlog. She's got a nice mix of beauty, fashion, and vlog content. So check her out. Next is Jamie Genevieve. I feel like you guys already know both of these women because they're in the like beauty industry, but Jamie Genevieve is actually the owner of Vive Cosmetics. Great makeup, but she also does makeup videos and vlogs on YouTube so love those she's from Scotland she's got the most beautiful Scottish accent so love watching her and then these two new wonderful people that I started following the first one is Melissa Merck she does a lot of like everyday day in the life type of content her videos and her vlogs are just very like normal everyday life the way that she puts everything together is beautiful and aesthetic gives a lot of like healthy inspiration and she's got very chill vibes and then lastly I have Olivia Jarvis I found her I think someone recommended her to me if not I found her in just like recommendations on YouTube she's gorgeous she does a lot of like health and wellness content just very inspirational i just like her whole like demeanor she's just very like calm she also has amazing workout videos too to like include them in her vlogs and stuff so those are just some people that i've been following recently and i thought that i would just share the love i feel like it's so hard to find creators that i really like and that i would like follow religiously because i feel like I'll find someone, I'm like, oh yeah, I like what they're doing and they could be doing something identical to like some, someone else that I follow, but it the, the vibes just have to be right. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, I just thought that I would share the love. Let me know what, who your favorite creators are down below. And that is all for my favorites video. These are all the things that I've been loving all month long. Make sure to list your favorites down below and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. See you soon.